have seniors, Charlie Simons, C.J. Williamson, Antonio Williams, Mitch Peterson, and Bill Whittington. I'll uh, open it up for Coach on a statement, and then we can open it up for questions. All right, well, first of all, great to be back here. That means basketball season's around the corner, so it's good to see everybody. Uh, appreciate you all coming out and uh, looking forward to this season, obviously, starting up here in a few weeks. Uh, we have a scrimmage this weekend. It's closed, but uh, November 6th, we open up, and we're excited about it. I guess just to address the elephant in the room, I mean, how's the team going to be different without Jalen Avery and Jalen uh, Walker? Yeah, different team every year. It's a different team. Uh, we also graduated AK. Uh, Frederick last year as well. And, uh, you know, you always have new guys coming in, some guys leaving. That's the beauty of college basketball. Uh, five seniors here. We have a lot of upperclassmen. And, um, you know, expect big things this year. Let's talk about different style of play, maybe based on who you do have back and who you added. Yep. Uh, well, last year, obviously, uh, at uh, right around June of last year, uh, Danny Pippen got hurt. He was a returning starter. Uh, he got hurt out for the season. Uh, Donis De La Rosa, who was also a returning starter, decided to transfer. Uh, so we changed how we played last year, okay, and uh, played with a lot smaller group. Mitch and CJ played almost exclusively at the four spot, um, and Phil was really our only front court player. So this year, uh, Danny's back. Uh, we've added some more size, and um, we certainly have more uh, big bodies, so probably play a little bit more the way we had in years past, uh, you know, trying to get the ball inside. But uh, we also have some versatility uh, if we do want to play small. You know, Mitch has played against bigger guys forever. CJ's been out all preseason with a broken foot, but. Uh, he last year guarded bigger guys. So we certainly have the ability to, to play multiple styles, which I think is important, uh, you know, as you move forward. Coach, I think you have uh, nine new faces on the roster. How has that uh, been challenging for you? Yeah, um, every year, you know, early in the year, we, we don't spend the summer doing a t whole lot of teamwork. We spend the summer working a lot on skill and individual work. So um, at the beginning of almost every year, we have you know some time where uh, we're trying to get a lot of things in in a short period of time. This year is no different. Um, you know, the upperclassmen, the guys that are returning, uh, know the drills, they know what we're doing, but there are a lot of people that are, that are new and trying to figure it out. So. Uh, you know, as you know, that's not always easy, but that's part of a college basketball team and a part of a college basketball season. So hopefully as we continue to get comfortable, uh, we'll get better as, as the years goes on. And we've seen some growth uh, through a lot of guys, uh, even in the few, you know, few weeks that we've been practicing. Uh, Coach, with the losses of your two leading three-point shooters and the rule change, how is the team adjusting? How are they? How is the three-point shooting shaping up? Yeah, it's early uh, to make that assessment. You know, you, you, you hit it on the head, though. We did graduate our two leading three-point shooters in terms of makes off of last year. So, um, and, and the line is different. I think it's probably a better question for these guys than me in terms of how they feel about it. But we're going to play the way we're going to play. Um, you know, we're going to defend the way we're going to defend. And, um, you know, if, if we miss threes, uh, we need to go offensive rebound. So um, we were one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the country two years ago. I, I see no reason why we shouldn't be in that category again this year. Now we have to go do it, but I, I see no reason why we shouldn't be. Antonio, how's uh, your role changed without J.A. and Jayla Walker this year? Um, I've been more of a vocal leader, and I'm actually been more of a team leader. Uh, moving to the point guard spot, it hasn't been really difficult. It's something I did before, but it's just been instead of being off the ball and getting guys involved, now I'm on the ball and having the ball in my hand more, getting guys involved and to the right spots. It's just, uh, you know, as a fourth year guy, just talk about, uh, you know, your career here, what you've done, and what you're looking to do as a senior. 
Uh, it's just been a great four years here, and uh, I'm looking to you know win another MAC championship like my freshman year. And um, I mean, this is one of the most talented teams I've been a part of here, definitely. And uh, we're just looking forward to this season. What kind of role you think you're going to bring this year? Uh, just I think I'm going to focus more on just doing the hustle type of plays and, and sticking to that type of role and doing whatever I can do to uh, help the team win, whatever that may be. The players talk about the three-point line, the lo the longer distance. It's going to change your game. Your, your uh, shooting. Yeah, I mean, it's not really that big of a difference. I mean, uh, we haven't really noticed any difference in practice in terms of percentages and stuff. Um, I don't see any big difference. I mean, you guys see it different. <laughs> <laughs> no, it really, it really ain't no big difference for real. It just we get the short range now. We can shoot from farther away from the hoop. <laughs> Phil, just talk about you know. First of all, you know, big year for you last year, and kind of a strange role that like coach said, where you're really the only post guy a lot of times down there, and just uh, you know maybe how things might be different for you this year, but you know building off the success from last year. Um. I see it being a little bit different because I'm having uh, a lot more size alongside with me. Um, Danny's been a huge help. Um, definitely, I've seen it in practice, um, especially when I box my guy out. He can come in and fly in and get rebounds and things like that. So it's a lot more easier, and I, I enjoyed it so far. Phil, it sounds like the offense is going to lean on you pretty heavy. Coach mentioned pound the ball inside. What's something you feel like you've improved upon in this offseason? Well, I think that we have offense weapons all over this team. Um, starting with our point guard, I think he, he loves to push the tempo and things like that. So I've been trying to work on um, improving my win, stuff like that, be able to keep up with him as well. But, um, you know, I'm, I think that it's going to be a, a good thing that we're going to be able to pound the ball inside and keep doing things like that. But I think we got a bunch of weapons all over this team. Like, I agree with Mitch. This is the most talented team I've been a part of since I've been here. Coach, Jalen Avery was the leader of this team the last four years for the most part. He's not here this year. Are you looking for someone specifically to step up in that leadership role, or will it be more by committee? Yeah, I mean, this year we have five seniors, right? So each of them has to take a, a greater ownership than maybe they have previously. Last year we had three seniors uh, with two of them, you know, Jalen Avery, Jalen Walker being four-year players, and both of them being starters uh, for – basically three years so um, this is new for a lot of these guys in different in different ways but um, they're they're all more than capable of helping lead the lead the team you know w w without question coach you talked about injuries a couple times yeah. in early interviews how healthy are you now? yeah we're not healthy yeah we have a lot of a lot of injuries and a lot of stuff that um, we, we don't have our full roster at practice um, we, we've had a minimum, CJ hasn't practiced all year. Uh, Gio, our freshman point guard, hasn't practiced all year. So that's two uh, that haven't practiced yet. And then, you know, between Danny and uh, I could probably say who has practiced all year more than who hasn't. Phil missed some days. Mitch has practiced every day. Troy and Booman, well, Booman missed some days too. So literally almost everybody outside of Mitch and, and Troy have, have, Mitch, have missed uh, practice time. Uh, I think Travell Beck is practiced every time too. But th there have been more that have missed than have been there. So that's been a little bit of a challenge because um, when you have multiple perimeter players out, uh, you have some guys playing out of position on both defense and offense. But you know, there's time to work that out. I think in the long run, it can help our team because. Uh, Guys are getting a lot of reps here now that they need to improve and getting a lot of stuff on film for us to work with these guys on. Uh, but it would be nice, like, you know, you'd like to have your team uh, for the season. So, um, you know, hopefully by the start of the year, you know, knock on wood, we'll, we'll have everybody, you know, ready to go. Um, but we're, we're still not sure about that yet. Start of the year meeting. Start of the year meeting November sixth. Yeah, that that would be the hope. Uh, yeah, that would be the hope. But but we may be short early at the beginning of the year as well. We'll we'll see. We're just whoever's out there has to perform at a high level. Like at the end of the day, um, 
you know, we had no excuses last year. We played our first five games without Jalen Walker. Uh, like I said, Danny was expected. Danny, as a sophomore, was one of the more promising junior front court players in the league. Uh, coming back, he didn't play at all that year. Uh, Adonis was, you know, one of the top two or three centers coming back in the league. He didn't play because he left. Um, we played without Jalen Walker. We played without Jalen Avery. You, you guys have to step up, and that's the bottom line. So if, if CJ's not ready, uh, that, that means that, you know, guys like Mitch or, or Troy or, or one of our younger guys uh, has to be ready uh, to play more and to be even more impactful than maybe they would have had to be if he was playing. How is Danny coming along, and what difference does having a player like that back? Yeah, uh, Danny, the first week of practice was, uh, you know, our most consistent player at practice so far has been Troy. But I would say that the first week of practice, I would have said Danny was our best player, okay? Uh, then he had to take some time off. And in my eyes, he when he came back, he did not play the way he had been playing prior. Um, the last couple practices, he's been back to, to practicing the way he was at the, the first week of practice. So, you know, for him, he's had two knee surgeries. Uh, one of them a major, you know, a major knee surgery. The other one, uh, you know, not that there's no not major surgery. He had two knee surgeries, one on each knee. So for him, you know, not every day is easy for him to get through practice and to be able to compete the way he's used to competing. But, um, you know, he, he's been good. And if he's healthy and is out on the court and able to play and able to keep his head straight, uh, he can be an impactful player. I would look at him and Phil and feel like we have a, a really, really good front court uh, if he's able to play at the level that, you know, that he's capable of. CJ, uh, how do you feel about your progression on your injury, and what are you being told about your progression from the trainers? Um, I'm taking it day by day, you know, not trying to rush it, not trying to, you know, get back on the court. I'm uh, just trying to take it day by day, um, heal, and just, you know, enjoy the process. But, um They've been telling me like the week, next week I'll probably be out the boot and walking with a shoe. Um, it's been like a month, so, you know, it's been healing. What, what has been your role? You know, you're among this big group of seniors, new leadership. What has been your role while you've not been able to practice? Um, just bring energy while I'm not on the court, you know, just bring energy, uh, lift everybody up, you know, let's get this win, let's get a good pra have a good practice, you know how it goes. So just bring energy, that's all I'm doing right now. Is it frustrating to sit on, to I mean, sit waiting for your senior year? A little bit sometimes, but I know it's a process. You got to you gotta wait, wait your turn. So I'll be back with the guys soon. Coach, of all the newcomers, who has uh, shown you some flashes so far? Well, Troy is who I would go with because he's a newcomer too, right? It's, a, it's his senior year, but he's he's new. Nobody here has seen him play. Um, and he's he's been really good. Um, the challenge, again, for Troy is – you know, you got to be in the gym all the time. You got to be in the gym extra. You got to you got to work on off days. Like that's what really good players do. They don't just show up and play. They do all of those extra things throughout the course of the season. Um, but in terms of in practice, I think he's our leading scorer over the course of practice. I think he's our leading three point shooter over the course of practice. Um, and, and he's got a positive assist to turnover ratio. And he's sort of picked up. He's a veteran player, even though he's new. So. Uh, he's picked up all of the concepts uh, that we that that we have in. I was going to say he was here last year practicing, but he only practiced about six times last year. So he he, he he's he's a smart basketball player with a good IQ. So he's able to pick things up rather quickly too. So uh, that's who I would I would say right now. And and with that being said, we we have a lot of guys who are new who have shown moments. You know, our our second practice, uh, Jerry dominated dominated. A boom man, our second practice. Uh, but since that point, <laughs> boom man has practiced better. But uh, we've had different moments where different guys have have sh have have played well. Boom man, do you agree with that? That you were dominated? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody dominated. <laughs> <laughs> Question for Phil. Uh, I've seen you play since your days at South Carolina Upstate. Now you're a senior here at Kent State, looking to be one of the best players in the conference. How do you think your game has grown from then to now? It's definitely have grown. Um, just learning the game um, is the big thing. You know, I haven't been playing basketball for an extremely long time. So 
um, learning the game underneath Coach Cindy and um, the assistant coaches and everything like that. It's been a crazy process, and I've enjoyed it, and I'm ready to get the season started. Troy, describe your game. What you know? What are we going to see when you play? Uh, I, I probably say I'm an exciting player. I bring a lot of energy. Um, I like the highlight plays. I like to shoot threes. So you probably going to see a lot of that from me. You got to be as anxious as anyone to get this thing going. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I can't wait to get back on the court, especially to play with these guys. It's a, um, group, a good group of guys up here. Um, you mentioned last year your defense is, you know, up and down, not not to your liking, I yeah. know, overall. Um, you said you were going to do some things in the offseason a little different to kind of stress that side. Um, yeah, that? Um, some of that has to do with our scouting and how we're going about that this year. Uh, Coach Hout would have been, you know, in basketball, we don't have, like in football, you have coordinators. We don't have coordinators. Players play both sides. you got to play. You can't sub out on offense and defense, right? So... Players play both sides. Coaches basically coach both sides of the floor. But Coach Hout was sort of the defensive coordinator. But in terms of scouting, uh, everybody shared scouting responsibilities. Okay, And this year, Coach Foos, who's new, he's going to do the defensive scouting for every game so that there's a consistent voice uh, in terms of what our players are hearing and how we're defending things game over game over game. Uh, Coach Jules and Coach Sly are both really good, so they're going to do the personnel alternating with teams and, uh, and help me and sort of come up with some offensive thoughts for each game that we, that we play. But Coach Foose will just be doing defense all year long, um, and that would be one big change. And then the second thing is personnel-wise, um, Jalen Avery, he was a great, great player. He, he, he was one of the least. He didn't foul very often. And for the point guard spot, he didn't get a lot of turnovers. He didn't create a lot of turnovers. It was just part of his game. Uh, Antonio and, uh, and Anthony get more steals, you know, per minute played, uh, certainly. And Booman was one of the leaders in the league. So now you have a different point of attack defensively. Uh, we have more size when we're playing Danny. You know, Danny as a four-man is bigger than Mitch and CJ as a four-man. CJ and Mitch as wings become your bigger wings. And, and there's a – Travell Beck is new. He's playing some on the wing. He's one of your bigger wings. So you'd like to think we should be better defensive rebounding uh, because we have more size. Uh, and in my opinion, we should create more turnovers uh, because we have, you know, Booman – at the point of attack defensively. But again, a lot of that's yet to be seen. Like, we now have to go out and do that. And, uh, you know, our first chance will be Saturday, and we'll get a chance to see how we look, and then we'll make our adjustments and, and try to improve from that point. One more. Just, you know, everybody goes through, like you said, the transition year and year in college basketball. Is it more difficult? I mean, people don't really think defense when you think about that, I guess. You always think about scoring. In, in terms of what, I'm Just sorry. Just trying to figure it out every year defensively. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think each year, you know, your personnel, obviously scoring, you know, do you have great shooters? Do you have good uh, driving team? Do you have good front court guys that you can throw the ball into? So you try to change a little bit based upon that, uh, based upon your personnel and based upon how you can play. And then defensively, like last year, you know, we switched a lot of stuff. Um, and early on, that helped us. It, it created a lot of steals. But as teams get used to it, they find ways to exploit things. That's that's what we're all doing. We're sitting there watching film for, I don't know. So Boo Man thinks I don't have a family. He thinks I don't do anything but watch film. He was mad because I wanted to watch film with him the other day. He's wondering, what, why am I in the office on this day? So that's what we do, right? So we're trying to figure out what to do to help our team be successful. That's what the other teams are doing, too. The exact same thing, trying to figure out how to exploit what they can. And I thought last year, you know, Mitch is a really good defender and really better de team defender than he may be individual defender. We put him in a bad spot a lot of times last year because we were switching everything. Now he's guarding other teams' point guards. That's not going to be his greatest strength. So if we can keep him as a really good team defender, that's going to help our team because he's a great team defender, the best block out guy we have, the best rotating guy for charges 
you know, that we've had in a long time. So we have to try to figure out as coaches how to put these guys in the best position possible each year. Coach, can you speak on uh, the first year players on how they transition to the program and if we're going to see any playing time out of any of them? Yeah, we're going to start Saturday and, and we'll have a much better idea, uh, you know, after these two scrimmages where we're at. So um, we have four freshmen, uh, Evan Bainbridge, uh, Kalen Bennett, uh, Gia, Santiago, and who and uh, Jerry uh, Hernandez. So those four freshmen. Uh, we have a junior college player, an AC, uh, and Yuri Castillo, uh, and then we have Nunu Travel Beck, who transferred here and is eligible to play right away. So those guys are all new. This Saturday, uh, we have a closed scrimmage. Next Saturday, we have a closed scrimmage. The following Friday or Saturday, I think it is, we have like a blue and gold open scrimmage for, for people to see. After that point, I have to make a determination with those guys who's going to redshirt and who's not going to redshirt. Um, some of that's going to be based upon how they progress, and some of that's going to be based upon the health and how we are in different areas, right? So um, all of those guys, I mentioned six new names, all of them have shown moments where you say, boy, they can really help you. And then all of them have also so shown some moments where, um, you know, they, they look like they're new players. So uh, this morning I watched film from our scrimmage last year against St. Bonaventure. And there were guys who played a lot in that scrimmage that by the end of the year weren't playing at all and vice versa. Anthony Roberts early in that scrimmage didn't play. He was a, an all freshman team player and should be one of the best sophomores, if not the best sophomore in the league, in my opinion, if he's right, then um, so you, you some of those things will will take care of itself as the season goes along, and uh, we have about three weeks to make some decisions on on those on those guys. Coach, I know it's early, but throughout these next couple of scrimmages, the first couple of games of the season, what would you like this team's identity to eventually become? Yeah, that's a great question because we, we've got to become a, a physical team. We've got to become a tough team. Uh, we've got to take care of the basketball, and then we have to share the basketball, right? And those would be the four things that, you know, we're really, really looking for, right? You've got to be a physical team. You can't uh, – our team's not very good when we try to play pretty boy basketball, right? And sometimes we get into that. That's not our deal. Um, we've got to be a tough team, and tough teams, you know, there's a lot of things tough teams do. It, it's not all physical. You know, tough teams cover up for each other. Tough teams communicate with each other on the court. Tough teams do all of those things. Tough teams block, box out. Tough teams go to the offensive glass every time, even when you are being blocked out. That's what tough teams do. They take charges. They pick each other up. All those things are what tough teams do, right? And then unselfishly, uh, we have to share the basketball because, you know, last year Jalen Walker was one of the best isolation players in the league. And, you know, for, sometimes he took shots that maybe were questionable, but that's what he did. This year's team is different. The, these guys have the ability to move the ball and make plays for each other, whether it's inside out or off ball screens better. But we have to go out and do that. And uh, to say we can do it or that we're going to do it, you know, every coach in the country sitting up here with their team right now saying this is what we're going to do. Everyone's saying how great their seniors are. But then you got to go out there and play, and you got to see if you can really do it. So um, that's the challenge every year that every coach and every team has, who's willing to do those things. And question for all five of you guys. When all fully healthy um, of you five, who would win a one-on-one uh, -on -one tournament? <laughs> no comment, man, for me. Three dribbles or less, Phil Phil couldn't win. But if it was as many dribbles as you want, Phil would have a tough time. He'd have a tough time with him. Unless he had to play defense. Then he'd have a tough time with these guys on the perimeter. Uh, Coach, last year was the – toughest strength of schedule that you've had here in your tenure how does this year's schedule stack up yeah I didn't know that but but we did play last year you know SEC team on the road and won uh Pac-12 school team on the road and won and uh and obviously we played Louisville in the ACC uh we did not win that game but uh this year's schedule you know playing Ohio State they're going to be top 25 I think when we play them 
Uh, Mississippi State uh, is going to be a borderline top 25 team, definitely an NCAA tournament team, at least on paper, coming back. Uh, and, and I think there's some really underrated games in there, like Wright State is, is a really, really good. They're picked to win their league. Uh, UTEP and UC Irvine, when we go play down in that tournament, UC Irvine won a game in the NCAA tournament last year. Uh, going to be a, a really big challenge that I don't think these guys quite understand how good they are, nor should they right now, right? Who's heard of them? But they're really, really good, and that's going to be a challenging game. And then UTEP, I think, had six guys sitting out last year or something like that. They just played Texas Tech in an open exhibition game and, and beat them. Uh, Texas Tech went to the national championship game last year, right? So uh, UTEP's a really challenging team. And then you, you sprinkle in some of these other games where Cleveland State's always tough and, you know, that's a local rivalry. Um, IPFW is a good team and what, very well coached. So there's a lot of tough games to challenge us. I, I think obviously it's highlighted by playing at Ohio State, which is a big deal for us. Uh, playing at Mississippi State, which again, a big deal and a great opportunity. That's really what those games are for us. They're great opportunities for these guys uh, to make a name for themselves and for our program. And we've beaten a lot of those teams in the past. These guys have beaten a lot of those teams in the past. We beat Texas. Mitch's freshman year or sophomore year? Freshman year at Texas. Like those are not easy. Teams in our league don't win many of those games. We've won a lot of them. So there's a challenge uh, in, in those games. And then there's a challenge to beat Towson on the road because that's our second game of the season. And playing Towson on the road and playing Bowling Green on the road are going to be two very similar type games. You, you got to be able to beat the Towsons on the road if you expect to beat the Bowling Greens on the road. So uh, th those games are, are really important for us as well. Great, great. Thank you, guys. Look forward to seeing you November 6th. I need to grab you guys in my office for a second.